thank you, uh, Dr. Maithili and Dr. Meena Chabra. Uh, for a change, I think we're going to talk about a different topic. We've been hearing quite a lot about uh, type 1 diabetes and quite rightly so. But not all young people have type 1 diabetes and that's worth keeping in mind. Uh, the numbers may not be as high as type 1 the younger you go. But at a certain age group, there could be other forms of diabetes, particularly between the 15 and 30 years age group. Let me try to share my screen. Able to see it now? Yes, yes, sir. See? Okay. So let me start by thanking Dr. Banshi Sabu. It's very kind of him to have invited me uh, and the organizing committee of this uh, meeting. And he asked me to talk on Modi Indian and global perspective. I was given 20 minutes, so I don't think I can cover even the Indian perspective in 20 minutes. So I will not even uh, go to the global uh, perspective because Modi has been researched on for over 30, 40 years now, and it would be almost 50 now. And so it will be impossible to cover all of that. Uh, so what I'll do is I have no conflict of interest to declare. All my studies on Modi were uh, funded by the Indian Council of Medical Research because we are an ICMR Advanced Center for Diabetes Research in general and for monogenic diabetes in particular. In fact, we are a national nodal center for monogenic diabetes. And before I go further, I, I would be failing in my duty if I didn't thank Dr. Radha Venkateshan, who is shown here uh, wearing the sari. And she's the head of genomics at our center. She's been working on this for over 20, 25 years now at our center. And her whole team, the whole team which works is not just on monogenic diabetes, but on genomics of diabetes in general. So we worked on genomics of type 2 diabetes, type 1 diabetes, fibrocalcific pancreatic diabetes, gestational diabetes, uh, on which, for example, Kanthimadi works exclusively on genomics of gestational diabetes. And of course, uh, monogenic diabetes is uh, this team, which now Kanthimadi and uh, Radha are mainly in the lead, but there are others who are involved. The good thing about this uh, is about this department at our center that it has produced almost 140 publications only on the genomics of uh, diabetes. And it has produced 15 PhDs who have completed uh, their work. So it's been a work which has been going on for the last uh, 20 to 25 years at our center. And again, to cover all of this also is impossible. Uh, so I will just give you a bird's eye view. For those of you who don't know uh, much about monogenic diabetes, as the name itself suggests, Unlike polygenic forms of diabetes, like type 1 and type 2 diabetes, in which there are hundreds of genes. In fact, type 2 diabetes, probably there are 600 or 700 genes which are responsible. Plus, there's a big environmental component as well. Type 1 diabetes also, apart from the HLA system, which there are many, there are many other uh, genetic forms. In fact, polygenic risk scores have been developed. But monogenic diabetes and, and also all those are only um, associations. They're not causal. If you find a TCF7L2 association, the strongest association for type 2 diabetes, it's only an association. You and I can also have it, but you won't get the disease. In contrast, monogenic diabetes is caused by a mutation in one gene, only in one gene. And that's why it's called monogenic. And that's the cause of the disease. That means you can pinpoint and say that this is this particular disease because we are able to detect this particular mutation. So it is actually precision medicine at its best if you talk about monogenic diabetes. The problem with monogenic diabetes is that, is that it's misdiagnosed in 90% of cases, and I'm quoting Andrew Hattersley and others, and many in India also, because any young child is thought to have type 1 diabetes. While type 1 diabetes is one of the commonest causes, there could be others who are not type 1 diabetes. And in my opinion, it's not right to ask somebody who doesn't have type 1 diabetes to take lifelong four times insulin, and they don't even need insulin in the first place. Therefore, it leads to inappropriate treatment like unnecessary insulin injections to which they may not even respond properly. Now, this is the flow of my talk. I'll keep it very short. I'll talk about Modi, maturity onset diabetes of the young. But being a ISPAD meeting, I have to mention also neonatal diabetes, which is onset of diabetes below six months of age. I'll also talk about why you should test for monogenic diabetes. Now, this entity called as Modi or maturity onset diabetes of the young was described by Tatisal and Fines. I remember this paper. It came out when I was in my uh, fourth year uh, of medicine. And I read this paper and I said, this is something which we have in our country because look at the criteria. Age at onset below 25 years, 
two or three generation transmission, no ketosis, no beta cell autoimmunity. Of course, these came later. We didn't have it in 1970s. We didn't have all that. But controllable without insulin for at least five years. So we have young children who come to us. Their parents, grandparents have diabetes. They never take an insulin in their life. And five or 10 years later, they're still alive. Type 1 diabetic people will not be alive after, at that time. They would be dead by the time they've not taken insulin. Like type 1, impaired insulin secretion is a major phenotypic uh, trait, but it's not as severe as type 1. And I have several papers to show the clinical differences between type 1 and the MODI and so on. Some of them are in press right now. There is no obesity or insulin resistance. So that is how you distinguish it from type 2 diabetes. If you if it's not type 1, then it could be type 2, isn't it? But in type 2 diabetes, uh, there will be insulin resistance or obesity. Here, you do not have. And the most important thing is that a single gene defect can be detected. Now, till 1975, the clinical description of Modi came. And by 1980s, I was already publishing papers on Modi. In fact, between 1984 and 87, I had four publications on Modi and diabetes care, back to back. Um, but those are all based on clinical descriptions of Modi. Today, I understand that many of them may not have been Modi at all. We are for using the Tattershall and Fiance criteria, which is not accepted anymore, by the way. You have to do genetic testing to diagnose Modi. The first gene for Modi was uh, discovered around 1992. And between 1992 and say 2000 or 2005, several subtypes of Modi were identified. For example, there was Modi 1, Modi 2, Modi 3 and so on. Modi 14, up to Modi 14 has been identified. Very recently, uh, Andrew Hattersley and team and other world leaders in this have now suggested that Modi 7 is not really a Modi. Modi 9 and Modi 11 also have to be deleted. So we don't report on these Modis anymore. First of all, you don't see them and uh, they are rare and they are not really Modi at all. So those three are gone. But the others are there, especially the first uh, five, with the exception of four, which is very rare. But one, three, one, two, three and five are quite common. More and more, we are seeing Modi 12 also coming in. Now, here are a series of publications. In uh, 2009, in JCM, we published a large series of Modi 3. And then we followed it up with clinical genetics paper on uh, Modi 1. Then we published a paper on Modi 2. And then we had a paper on Modi 5, which is a HNF1 beta uh, mutation. Uh, we, this was a discovery paper uh, in BMC Medical Genetics, where we reported on all the Modi subtypes. And at that time, we identified a novel Modi uh, in uh, in India, uh, from India. And those of you interested uh, can look up uh, this particular paper. This is the paper in 2021, where we did a systematic review of uh, a review of Modi. And we said, which are the Modis which should be reported and which are the Modis which should not be reported. Both those, we had made it very clear uh, in this particular uh, paper. But you may ask, why bother about all this in an ISPAD meeting? Should you even talk about Modi? This is one of those rare, you know, crackpots like Mohan will come and talk something about Modi and we have to listen to that also. You know, it's all type 1 or type 2. There's no other condition uh, called Modi and all that. Why should you even bother about it? If you look at the clinical description of some of these children, you will understand why you still have to keep in mind that there could be other forms. For example, this is a 16-year-old girl. She was thin, presented severe diabetes, A1C was high, and that's it. Usually, people don't proceed beyond that unless you come to a specialized center. So based on this, she was straight away diagnosed to have type 1 diabetes, and she was told you have to take lifelong insulin. She started on three times insulin per day. And uh, you know they were the, the parents were asking, is there any other diagnosis, anything else possible? No, 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 you shall die if you stop insulin. So with that, they always go for second opinion, third opinion, fifth opinion. So they landed up finally at our center. Okay. And Many type 1s come and we look at the profile and we say, this is type 1, you have to continue with type 1. But this child, what we first do, we have a protocol which we follow at our center. First thing is to take a pencil and paper and draw the family history. Now, this is the proband who is uh, at that time 16 years old. And then on the mother's side, we found her mother had diabetes. One of her aunts and another aunt and another aunt had diabetes. One of those aunt's uh, son, that is her first cousin, also had diabetes. And then there were others in the next generation and the next generation. So this is a typical autosomal dominant type of inheritance. Look inheritance. Look at the father's side, there is no diabetes at all. Father, brothers and all not diabetic. So based on this, we said, okay, such a strong family history, four generations, a little unusual in type 1 diabetes. So this we get it in the first uh, half an hour after they arrive. Okay. Then what we do is within two hours, we get the C-peptide. 
when you get the c-peptide it's nowhere in the type 1 range today we have cut points for type 1 type 2 modi we have cut points for india which we have described this is clearly outside the even for a remission stage of type 1 uh, it was beyond that we don't see that in type 1 at all then we got uh, a few days later we got the gar antibodies and the zinc transporter both came negative so we said okay this child has family history of diabetes three generations c peptide is good all the antibodies are negative why shouldn't we do genetic testing for her so you can see how many steps we use before we send a blood for genetic testing because genetic testing is expensive if we have to do it free we have to pay a lot of money the patient has to pay they have to pay not a lot of money we made it very cheap now but even so there is some money involved in it either i have to pay or, or they have to pay most of the time it ends up that i keep paying for many of you who send me samples you know that okay so here is the results of the test so the results came this girl had a mutation in the hnf1 alpha arginine to histidine there was a mutation the hnf1 alpha is modi 3 okay and you can see that not only this girl had her mother had all those in red who had diabetes had the mutation which is shown by a star what then happened was her sister by the time also developed uh, diabetes so we quickly tested her for modi she also had modi 3 turned out that this mutation was found in eight members of the family all eight of them had diabetes the non-diabetic members were tested they did not have the mutation on the father's side nobody had the mutation including the father so it is very clear now diagnosis is clear this girl has modi she has modi 3 it's coming from her mother and it's come from several generations of mother probably if you tested that third or fourth generation they would also have the mutation but they were not alive so we could not do that based on this we said okay now let her take let us take because modi 3 is a type of diabetes that responds to sulfonylurea agents so we said let's take her off insulin this is not type 1 diabetes we started her on glibenzlamide the cheapest of the sulfonylureas on which most of the studies on modi have been done today we are doing a randomized clinical trial on glycolysate to see whether it works as well as glibenzlamide in modi so they showed excellent response a1c came down to 6.8 today it's about 20 20 years 25 years since she met me and she's still on uh, tablets she has not needed insulin at all now she had not come for the genetic testing she would have been still on insulin three times a day four times a day unnecessarily it's almost cruel uh, to the patient so this shows how modi genetic testing helped to avoid unnecessary lifelong insulin therapy in these patients and this is a clear example of precision diabetes and how you should think of other diagnoses when a child young child 16 years old presents to you with what looks like type 1 diabetes at the first and it's also an example of how from genomics lab from our research lab to clinical practice today the genomics has has really progressed let me now talk about neonatal diabetes you thought that was a dramatic thing uh, now let me talk about something which is even more dramatic now imagine a newborn child less than 6 months of age okay newborn 1 month 2 months old that child gets diabetes straight away the child is diagnosed to have type 1 diabetes let me tell you something below 6 months of age type 1 diabetes is extremely rare okay extremely rare and rohatasli used to say that it never occurs and i used to argue with him no no i have got two three cases and he said no it will never occur never occur never occur recently he published a paper on type 1 diabetes uh, below 6 months of age uh, so it can occur but it is extremely rare so think of all other causes when you have a child below 6 months after 6 months to say 10 15 years most likely it is type 1 diabetes below 6 months be careful it may not be and any child below 6 months must be tested for genetic test now there are two types of neonatal diabetes the first is a transient variety i don't get too many of these cases because within 2 3 months it will it will go away the diabetes will come 2 3 months you given some insulin something before you get the result the genetic test itself the diabetes goes away this is not very common in my opinion because they don't come to me but the commonest now that we're finding is permanent neonatal diabetes once it comes it stays the diabetes doesn't go away okay now let me again oh i don't have a case to show you okay in very brief we made it okay i have had uh, you know children who come to me who are say 3 months old 4 months old and when we do the genetic testing for them they turn out to have one of two mutations either a kcnj11 mutation or an abcc8 mutation these are the commonest but you can also have 
an insulin gene mutation. If you have an insulin gene mutation, tablets will not work. The child needs to be on insulin. Why I'm telling you this is, don't stop insulin for every child who's diagnosed below six months of age, saying Dr. Mohan said it's unlikely to be type 1 and likely to be neonatal diabetes. And so I'm stopping insulin trying tablets. It may be type 1 diabetes. How do you know? Number one. Number two, it may have an insulin gene mutation or other mutations which don't respond to salicylmaluria. There are only two which respond, which is a KCNJ11 or the ABCCA, which is commonest. More than 50% of all neonatal have that. If they have it, then you can do that. You may say, how do I find it out? Just send the blood to us and we'll do it free of cost for you. We don't charge for neonatal diabetes at all. Anywhere in India, any child below six months of age, send us a blood sample. In three weeks time, we'll give you the results and then you can start the treatment as you like without one rupee being uh, collected from you. Okay. Now comes to the question, why test for monogenic diabetes? Because it helps to differentiate between type 1 diabetes and helps to avoid unnecessary lifelong insulin. It helps to define the prognosis. As I told you, that girl who was uh, prescribed three times insulin per day and completely went off insulin helps in family counseling. You saw how many members of that family had the same genetic trait. If you had not studied the family, uh, we would not have known. So every member, in neonatal, it does not happen. Neonatal, you don't get this three-generation transmission. That is peculiar to Modi. In neonatal diabetes, only the child will have, the father and mother will not have. So even within monogenic diabetes, there are so many clinical variations which you should know. Of course, it helps to uh, in taking treatment decisions because we know now, today we have a kind of an atlas, a kind of dictionary based on the monogenic mutation. We can tell you which one will respond to which particular drug and so on. As I mentioned to you, our MDRF, the Madras Diabetes Research Foundation, that's our genetic lab and that's our uh, research center actually in Sirisiri in the outskirts of Chennai. It's a three and a half acre, uh, six and a half acre campus. Uh, where 40,000 square feet only for research. And that's where all our genetic labs are uh, situated. Um, so we get samples from so many places. And I'm happy to tell you that uh, our chairperson, Dr. Michael, is one of those who has sent me many uh, samples for uh, uh, monogenic uh, diabetes uh, testing. And of course, even from all the medical colleges, from PGI Chandigarh, from Ames, uh, New Delhi, uh, from Calcutta, Kolkata, and from all over the country, we are a nodal center uh, for monogenic diabetes. We have set up a registry. It's called www.monogenicdiabetes.in. If you just go there, it will tell you all about different types of uh, uh, monogenic diabetes and what you should do, how to send a blood sample, how to take the consent form. All that is there in that. And as I told you, we are not doing this for commercial purposes. You can ask for complete free treatment. We'll be happy to help you. Now, you may think, oh, such a rare thing he's talking about. He probably saw that one case and with that one case, he is a uh, uh, thing. I always believe that one swallow doesn't make a summer. So if it had seen one case, I won't even give a talk on it. You know, it's not worth it. 983 cases have been referred to us for Modi, in which a significant number of Modi 1, Modi 3, Modi 2, Modi 5, Modi 12, Modi 11, and Modi 10 uh, have been found. And these numbers are increasing. Today, we have 1,562 uh, uh, total monogenic diabetes. Look at the number of neonatal diabetes, 315. It's not one or two. And here is ABCCA, KCNJ. As I told you, if they have other uh, mutations like NKK2.2 or insulin gene, 11 cases had insulin gene, they will not respond to sulfonylureas. But look at the ABCCA, KCNJ. They do respond. Now, apart from that, why you do genetic testing is, you may think that the patient just has, or the child just has type 1 diabetes. But when you do the genetic testing, in, in somebody who's you're not sure, and I'll tell you in the end how to do that, they might have syndromic forms of diabetes. For example, if they have walcott rollison syndrome, and that's not uncommon, 27 cases we have diagnosed, okay, EIF, EIF2AK3 mutation, or DIDMOD, Wolfram syndrome, where they have diabetes, insipidus, diabetes, mellitus, optic atrophy, and deafness, or MID, maternally inherited diabetes with, with deafness, and many others. Uh, for example, there is uh, TRMA, which is thiamine responsive megaloblastic anemia. We just give thiamine, diabetes will go away, anemia will go away like a miracle you know so and 76 cases we have had it's not one or two 76 cases the last one i want to talk about is congenital hypoglycemia it's as common as neonatal diabetes almost every week i get a case referred from some part of the country saying that this child is going to continuous hypoglycemia 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 can you do genetic testing again it's the same gene you can see abcc8 kcnj same abcc8 
and KC and D. Of course, there are some other mutations. These are the commonest. Now, what happens is one is a loss of function mutation, the other is a gain of function mutation. If you have a loss of function mutation, you'll develop neonatal diabetes. If you have gain of function mutation, you'll develop congenital hypoglycemia. This congenital hypoglycemia, look at the number of cases, 188 cases, it's not a small number. These children, some of them, these neonates, some of them respond to diazoxide. You just give them a tablet and the sugar will become normal. Some of them require octreotide. A few years ago, before this genetic testing came, if a child had persistent hypoglycemia, they sent the child for subtotal pancreatectomy. They just removed the pancreas to prevent the hypoglycemia from continuing. Today, based on the genetic mutation, we can say this child will respond to disoxide, this child needs octreotide, and a very small number, less than 5% of these children require pancreatectomy. So we are actually able to prevent pancreatectomy by doing a genetic study. So you can see there is so much to neonatal diabetes, to monogenic diabetes, that you really have to know something about the, and this is all done in our country. You don't have to send a drop of blood outside the country and within two, three weeks, we'll be able to give you the results as well. So to conclude, ladies and gentlemen, Diagnosis of MODI has helped many adolescents and young adults wrongly diagnosed as type 1 diabetes to go off insulin and to be treated with sulfonylureas. The list of uh, patients is increasing. We have a large number. When to suspect MODI? If you think that a person has type 2 diabetes but is lean, type 2 diabetes will be obese. You don't get a lean type 2 diabetes coming at young age. Very, very rare. But if it is lean, no acanthosis nigricans. Just look at the neck. There will be severe acanthosis nigricans in type 2. Nothing. It's clean. Okay. No other signs of insulin resistance. Then ask, is this MODI? If you see three generation transmission, this could be MODI. Okay. Because early onset type 2 diabetes responds best to metformin, whereas MODI responds better to a sulfonylurea. So the treatment actually changes. If you have suspected type 1 diabetes, but you do the C-peptide and C-peptide is preserved. Well, it could be a honeymoon phase of type 1, but it will soon go off. It will go down. But here the persistent C-peptide for one year, two years persistent insulin dose is not very high. The child is not having severe swings of blood sugar as type 1s have. The glycemic variability is not much. Then you do the antibodies, GAD antibodies, zinc transporter, all negative. Slightly milder diabetes, less fluctuations. It could be MODI. So do the genetic testing. Prove whether it's MODI or not. And then you can, all the tests come negative monogenic diabetes, probably a milder form of type 1. Okay. All children with diabetes diagnosed before six months of age, and I put it as capitals, must undergo genetic testing. I think it's cruel if you don't do genetic testing for them. It's therefore, duty to identify MODI and neonatal diabetes as if you diagnose certain genetic mutations, these for these children, it's a miracle. They can go off insulin and be treated with tablets. And not only the child, the family, but also the whole community will benefit due to that. And with that, I would like to thank the organizers once again.